Ze is genoemd gezelschap met Kerry Walter voor ochtend en zij is stichter in die hoofd uitvoerende beambte van Walpro. Kerry, welkom to Groot Blaas. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for just giving us your time. And I think um, let's start at the beginning. Just tell me a little bit more about Volpro. Who are you guys? So Volpro is a, a vulture conservation organization that focuses holistically on um, conserving African vulture species through a multifaceted approach. So, you know, we look at both in situ and ex situ conservation strategies. And we're also the only organization of its kind on the continent spearheading to breeding for population supplementation programs. Mm. When it com comes to vultures, how are things in general? I mean, obviously, just the fact that you guys exist means that they need attention and care. Um, just an overview picture of the vulture population in South Africa at the moment. How are things going? So firstly, vultures are the fastest declining bird species globally. So things, you know, globally are not looking um, optimistic uh, for vultures worldwide. In Africa and South Africa, we are facing an African vulture crisis where some species have declined by up to 97% yep. in the last 30 years. So, so things are pretty in, in much in dire straits mm. and that they are needing urgent conservation attention in order to prevent extinctions. Mm. What exactly causes this decline in numbers? There's various threats. All of them are man-made, unfortunately. I think the, the most pressing threats that uh, quite a few uh, members of public have heard about on the news is the, the use of poisons, both indirectly and directly. But I think most importantly, hand in hand with that, and which is increasing, is the harvesting of vultures for belief based purposes. Mm. And this threat is on the increase and potentially could wipe out, for example, the vulture population in Kruger National Park. Mm. The other major threat, which is often not spoken about, are actually power line collisions and electrocutions. And this is as devastating as poisoning and is having as big a, um, a, a negative, mm. negative impacts to vultures as, as poisonings. Mm. So I would say those are really the major players of the reasons why vultures are um, decimated. Mm. And before we get to this relocation project, which sounds amazing, just tell me a little bit about what is the role of a vulture? I mean, when, if their numbers decline, what is the big worry from your side when it comes to the bigger picture? Sure. So vultures are the most efficient scavenger um, that we have. They consume carcasses so quickly that it helps prevent the spread of diseases. Mm. I think a really, really good example to highlight this was the Asian vulture crisis, when 99% of Asian vultures declined, and it became a human health issue, where um, you know carcasses were rotting, mm. and um, this started uh, producing um, huge numbers of of disease issues. Um, which people ended up being affected by it directly. Also an epidemic of um, rats, feral dogs contracting rabies, kids being bitten by those dogs. And so, you know, it really did highlight the impact of what mm. would happen if we lost our vultures. So vultures are incredibly important to prevent the spread of diseases. But also what is not spoken about is they actually help by recycling important nutrients back into the environment, mm. actually consuming carcasses so quickly. Now, tell me about this relocation project. Um, why is there reason to be so happy about this move? So I think, you know, this is definitely the first this has ever happened for Africa and for, for old world vulture species. Mm. Um, you know, it is the biggest relocation of vultures ever. You know, 155 is a, is a massive, it massive is. target. And that is the first phase. 
But I think for me, the most important thing is, firstly, it gives stability to the captive non-releasable vultures, which mm. I think is really pertinent, especially with this population being the core founding population of African vultures globally, mm. which means you know, it is our responsibility to protect and nurture these non-releasable birds and mm. keep them safe. Mm. Keep them safe from diseases. We all know of avian influenza and how that is spreading throughout the country. Yes. So we need to be able to spread the risk, so to speak, and to really protect this core founding population instead of having all our eggs in one basket, so mm. to speak. Um, in addition, the safety aspect, as I said, the, the trade in vulture parts is escalating. Yeah. So instead of having the largest collection of vultures under one roof here in Hardebeersput, we are spreading the risk and actually protecting vultures at two sites. From a breeding perspective, it is the first time that the country is recognizing um, the importance of captive breeding. Yeah. And what captive breeding can do to prevent the extinction of vultures. Mm. And I think this is really a major, major uh, positive, you know, a breeding for population um, reintroductions and supplementation has been used widely in America and Europe. Mm. But never before has it actually been accepted as a conservation tool in Africa. Mm. This green light now finally actually accepts that, which I think is a major <laughs> for vulture conservation. Yeah. So if we look at the practical part of the relocation, I mean, um, how is that going to work practically and where are they being relocated to? Just the process of, of, of that relocation. That's, that's a good question. It's a, <laughs> it's a massive, massive feat. And... Thank goodness we have DHL on board. They're actually going to, um, they, they're partnering with us and they're going to be the ones responsible for undertaking this massive move. Mm. Um, so we're hoping to do, obviously, the move in one go on the first phase, so 155 birds in the biggest DHL vehicle that they have. DHL is also uh, securing the 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 move with security. We've got to also make sure that the birds are secure given mm. that they are highly sought after for belief-based purposes. Mm. And these these breeding birds, and I must reiterate, it's just the breeding program that are, that are being moved. The rest remains mm. in Hardebeersport. So um, they are being moved from Hardebeersport to the Shamwari Private Game Reserve mm. in the Eastern Cape, which we are all incredibly excited about. I've, I've actually been to your facility there in Hartbespo Dam and um, it, it's quite a, a sight to be seen. And I know a little bit about, about the wonderful work you guys are doing. When it comes to misconceptions uh, with vultures or about vultures, what would you say are the main ones that, that you guys are trying to counter? A couple of them. Firstly, I think there's a misconception that vultures are aggressive and that if we pretend to be dead mm. uh, or if we're sick and we're lying outside, you know, in an area which has vultures, mm. we are going to be eaten alive. And I think that is a, a real misconception that we have because vultures are, they're not the, the bravest of birds. Mm. So if, if they are not confident they are simply not going to come down um, and they are more scared of us you know another misconception is that vultures are going to attack us um, they're not they're terrified of us you know they they are very um, simple species mm. in that when to be left alone they want to live they want to breed they want to survive and they want to thrive mm. and they mean no harm and yet as human beings we associate them with the afterlife. So we perceive them as being these yes. scary, yes. ugly looking, smelly, disease riddled birds. And that is so far from the truth. In fact, they're incredibly clean birds. Mm. They bath after every meal. 
And if you look at us as human beings, we don't bath after every meal, oh, for example. True. That is absolutely <laughs> true. You mentioned that you're very thrilled, especially with the move, you know, it taking pla- the, they, they're going to um, Shamvari. What makes the conditions more ideal there if we look specifically for this relocation? I think the biggest thing is the safety aspect. You know, in Harder Beer Sport, there's a lot of um, development going around Volpra currently. Mm. Um, And uh, that places the birds at, you know, risk. We have people knocking on our door asking if we're selling vultures. Um, So I think the safety aspect at Shamwari is massive. I also think the financial security in having partners such as Shamwari really does give security to the birds and, you know, from a longevity point of view, especially with us as a nonprofit organization, it gives us, although we're still having to fundraise, you know, through the Shamwari Foundation, Mm. it does still give us a little bit of a a breathing space, which I think is so incredibly important, especially in these economic trying times. Mm. And then from the environment point of view, and especially the future releases that we would like to do with Cape Vultures, you know, Shamwari is creating an area in bringing back the environment, what it used to be and Mm. how it should be nurtured and preserved. And Vultures is really a key species that is missing from what Shamari is and has, you know, developed mm. in creating a natural environment and and a safe environment for species. So we're incredibly excited to be able to release, undertake future releases of Cape vultures there mm. in order to keep them in, in a protected area. Obviously, the area is growing and you cannot keep uh, vultures in an area because they fly wherever they want, but really nurture them in trying to preserve and protect them in a safe environment Mm. compared to if we look in Hardebeersburg, where the development is so huge, Mm. it is becoming increasingly unsafe, not only for the captive birds, but the wild birds too. Mm. Just quickly, and just a final thought from your side. Um, you are confident that this is a move in the right direction to safeguard the future of our vultures, right? I, I am. I'm very, very confident. Um, I'm terrified, you know, at the top <laughs> at hand and the magnitude at hand, but everything inside of me is telling me that this is the future of vulture conservation. You know, we cannot protect vultures solely in their natural environment and habitats because of all the threats. You know, and just like Kruger National Park, even though it is a nature reserve and and our largest national park, we still cannot protect all the animals in there if you look at the poaching that's happening. Mm. So we need to look at innovative ways, and I do believe that this is the future of vulture conservation in order to prevent their extinction. Kerry, that is amazing. And thank you for what you guys are doing. Thank you for the chat this morning. All right. Big pleasure. Thank you for having me.